we've been to Macon, Georgia, Stone Mountain Park, then through Tennessee and Kentucky, searching for the best place to experience the total solar eclipse of 2017. I think we've found it here, on the shores of Lake Barkley. Let's explore the area, shall we? I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. This video is sponsored by Rat Power Bikes. Well, first things first, uh, we've arrived hungry from the long trip, so let's drive down to the marina area where they have a restaurant. This is all oh, very nice. It looks uh, like they have boats for rent. This floating building here seems to be the campground store and the restaurant. So let's go in and check it out. In typical KOA fashion, very well stocked convenience store and the restaurant has all you can eat catfish. But the three-piece platter is plenty for us. They have all these paddle boats here, free of charge for guests of the campground, so maybe we'll hop into one of these before we leave. Well, that's an RV with a view, if there was ever one. A view of the beautiful sunset about to happen. This right here is Lake Barkley, which is part of the Cumberland River. And the Kentucky Lake, on the other side of, the, of that island, is a part of the Tennessee River. And at one point, it was the largest man-made lake in the world. It is boaters paradise around here. Can't wait to explore the area tomorrow. Where we ate. It's a floating restaurant. Good night. And good morning. I wake up early to fly the drone and show you the immediate area around us. The landmass across Lake Barkley is an island called the Land Between the Lakes National Recreation Area. That's the marina down there where we were last night. And this is the area here where we are. Still almost empty for some reason. Okay, let's explore by land now. Our first uh, point of interest will be the nearby town of Cadiz. They have this farmer's market and they have some activities planned for the eclipse as well, like concerts and such. The town is also famous for its antique shops. Let's check out these uh, Cherokee antiques and I wonder what's up with all the pigs around.
My grandma used to have one of these. Hmm, I wonder if this microphone works, uh, you know, for the podcast. Actually, these last few shots have been from another antique shop next door called uh, the Katie's Antique Mall, situated where the old Katie's Hotel used to be. Well, it still works. Welcoming visitors, but also taking time to see the eclipse from the point of greatest totality. Well, if you've seen enough antiques, we'll continue. Cool, the church has a carillon. Looks like perhaps we are a little bit too late for the farmer's market. Well, here we are in Cadiz, uh, Kentucky, and the farmer's market just closed. They apparently, as I was saying, the, the market, uh, the farmer's market was only 7 till noon, and it's just noon right now. So we couldn't check it out, but the, the, those, those antique shops uh, were really nice. Let's continue exploring. Yeah, well, if we hadn't spent that much time in the antique shops, uh, we would have been able to see the farmer's market, you know, maybe buy something. Well, this is downtown. This is the justice center. Very nice. And this is our car. Nice, quaint uh, little town. Cadiz. There are some historic homes here on Main Street. The most famous one is this last one called the Furholm Historic House. And they even offer tours of the house, by appointment only. This one is nice too. It also looks like they are going to have an antique car show here in this parking lot. Don't forget the historic cemetery. <laughs> Let's cross the Cumberland River, as I said, also known as Lake Barkley. And on the other side, here we have it. The land between the lakes. There's an area where supposedly you can see elk and bison. Uh, but we came through the wrong entrance. This is the wildlife viewing area, but it is overcrowded and it seems kind of lame, so we're gonna continue. Besides, we're getting hungry. You know what? Let's be adventurous. Let's get on one of these dirt roads. See where it leads. We're going into the unknown. Literally, off the beaten track. And... This is probably one of the longer and most desolated ones, you know, of these dirt roads around here. We end up at this uh, campsite right here uh, by Pesca Bay. I can't believe that travel trailer made it all the way here on that dirt road. And there's a bunch of people here, you know, some tent camping. The campground is called Pisgah Point. And next time, I might come with Minitini. Hey, that was very cool down there, Bruno. It was really cool. This old cemetery. And this one is called the Lee Cemetery. Let me see if I can show you from up here. Yeah. 
Actually, in the video, the road doesn't look nearly as bad, but it is bad. Lots of washboard. Yes, finally, pavement. We're going to cross the Barclay Canal here, and by now we are really hungry. And we've heard of this place called the Paddies in Grand Rivers. It comes highly recommended, not only by my cousin Juan from Louisville, who, who did recommend it, but also by many of you who follow me on social media. Let's go to Paddies. It is not just a restaurant. It is called Paddy's 1880s Settlement. And it is this whole touristy complex with touristy shops and apparently very popular. We haven't been around here yet. It looks like they also do weddings and other events here. Yes, this place is very, very large. It is supposed to be a recreated historical log cabin village. Oh, it's hot in Kentucky today. Uh, by the way, the place feels a little bit like a tourist trap, but it, it comes highly recommended, so I'm gonna check it out. Look, there's like a little fountain there. And the lady, the, at Paris, the waiting time is like forever. But she said that the Bills, I think, Mr. Bills is um, the same food, and it's only 20 minutes, so that's what we're gonna eat. Old time photos. Yeah, it's definitely a textbook uh, tourist trap. I mean, they even have panning for gold. And oh, I'm starving. <laughs> Chapel, yes. Here's the chapel, and here they have a shrine dedicated to the late Bill and Patty, the founders of this place back in 1977. It was originally a hamburger and ice cream parlor. Well, I think it is almost time to eat. We begin with the soup and what looks like a bread in a flower pot. Let me show you. And it comes with strawberry butter. Mm, very strange. And their famous pork chops. Very tasty. Very juicy. Although we actually got the smaller one. They have one that is twice as thick. He's looking at me. Well, that was a filling meal. Very satisfying. And uh, when we return in about 30 seconds, we will continue exploring the lakes and the land between them. Rad Power Bikes is an electric bike manufacturer offering direct-to-consumer pricing on powerful premium electric bikes. Because they sell directly to you, the consumer, you won't see the large retail markup that would be present if you were buying from a third party or a dealer, ensuring you're always getting a performance e-bike at a fraction of the cost. Visit www.radpowerbikes.com or call 1-800-939-0310 to learn more about their models or to place an order. Now offering free shipping on all four models. Full belly, happy heart. Let's continue. Someday we will explore Grand Rivers, population less than 400, in more detail, but some other time. Let's go see this marina here real quick at the lighthouse landing. Hey, they have an RV park. This is actually Kentucky Lake, created by the Kentucky Dam on the Tennessee River. This is the other lake. There must be something dead nearby. Okay. 
Chanquete. Okay, let's continue. This right here is called Canal Overlook. And I guess it is a nice place for locals to come, relax, see the boats sail by. This channel connects Lake Barkley with Kentucky Lake, which, as I said, are artificial lakes created on the Cumberland and Tennessee rivers, respectively. We are going to call it a day and return to the campground and we will continue exploring tomorrow. Is it me or this area of Kentucky is just lovely? Listen to the cicadas as the sun goes down over Lake Barkley. Good morning. From the land between the lakes. Sort of. Last night I had my camera out. And it got all wet. Beautiful morning. Let's go try a paddle boat. These are not very well maintained. This, uh... Well, yeah, the boats are dirty and it is all full of dead bugs from last night and spider webs and spiders. Yeah, the spiders are very much alive. We're exploring. This here is a road that goes kind of, sort of, on the hills behind the campground. We saw it from the campground. Hey, check it out. There's the campground and there's Minitini. That's us. Let's check out this Eddy Creek Marina and Resort. The thing with all these marinas is that they all look almost the same. The same with the lakes. They are all very pretty. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. But it is all very similar. The lodge. Look at this uh, marina. There has been a lot of talk about how heavy traffic is going to be because of the upcoming eclipse on Monday. Here's my traffic report. And the traffic report uh, so far, it's uh, not uh, very much traffic at all, even though they have these signs that say heavy traffic. But so far, I-24, it looks clear on Sunday afternoon parking for the eclipse. We are now by the city of Eddyville and it looks like they are ready for the rest of the eclipse chasers coming here tomorrow. Next, let's go check out the city of Kutawa, which together with Eddyville had to be moved in 1960 when they built the dam on the Cumberland River creating Lake Barkley. Let's check out this uh, scenic overlook here. The ruins of the original Kotawa remain underwater, although when Lake Barkley reaches winter pool each fall, the remains of old Kotawa, Kentucky emerge. By the way, this is all part of the new Kotawa. 
We are now going towards the Kutawa Harbor Marina. And these historic houses here to the left, probably some of them were moved here from the area now at the bottom of the lake. To the right here we have the marina and this pretty famous bar and restaurant called Hubie's. But we're not in the mood right now, so we'll visit some other time. And this here is part of Vista Ridge Park. And they even have a little beach, so let's check it out. Oh no, you have to pay. Plan B. Oh, here we are uh, in the historic uh, town of Kutawa. And this is the Kutawa, um, Kutawa recreation area, Lake Barkley. And these people are pretty strict about alcohol around here. Anyways, we're gonna continue exploring this um, area of uh, Western Kentucky. Uh, we're gonna go to the Kentucky Dam soon. Hello, Bambi. We continue west on Highway 62 towards the Kentucky Dam, passing by Lake City. And I wanted to show you here to the right what on the satellite view looks like a massive mine or a quarry, you know, big hole on the earth. It's called Vulcan Materials, but there's no way I can get a better look. It is all fenced up. Well, here we are to our left, the Kentucky Dam. You know what's kind of freaky? It, when you see how much higher the water level on the lake is, how much water is actually being contained by this concrete structure. Now, driving on top of the dam, let's park and visit the visitor center. the Kentucky Dam. This looks like one of the turbines that makes the electricity. Yeah, the turbine. A cog in the wheel and maybe they should replace this. The dam was built during the late 1930s and early 1940s. And apparently the main purpose was to reduce flooding down river, you know, in the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. It also produces hydroelectric power, of course, and the Kentucky Lake, the largest artificial lake nowadays in the eastern United States. This is the Tennessee River, which 22 miles downstream joins the Ohio River by the city of Paducah, which we are going to visit next, actually. And eventually the Ohio River joins the Mississippi in Cairo, Illinois. Okay, let's head out to Padoka now, our final destination for the day. Here we are, downtown Padoka. Let's find the parking and see what this city has to offer. Decisions, decisions, where should I park? first thing we see are all these murals here in front of the river, uh, right by the confluence of the Tennessee and the Ohio rivers. And that's the Tennessee River. This is the historic riverfront. On the right, the Tennessee River. On the left, the Ohio River. And on the other side, it's Illinois. Port of Paducah, Kentucky. Welcome.
this old locomotive here, I guess it is part of the Paducah Railroad Museum. The big steam engine. I love all this old technology. And I guess steam engines were state of the art uh, around uh, 1850 or so, right? These murals here, by the way, are on the flood wall, and it began in 1996 by Louisiana artist Robert Dufford. And the project has been growing ever since, and it is nowadays one of the top t tourist attractions here in town. Uh, each one of these has a story. Let's walk around downtown a little bit. I know there are a couple of museums here in the city and other things to see, but we want to get something light to it. And if you know me by now, a good local IPA. As I've said, I find these small city downtowns very, very picturesque. Best choice is Shady's. Actually, the name of the place is Shandis, and it is quite nice, actually. The name derives from their signature drink, which is a shandy, which is a beer mixed with a soft drink, except that here they put hard liquor into it, too. This has a vodka, bourbon, scotch, a shock top, Stella, and... Uh, lemon juice. Yeah, pretty potent drink, if I may say so myself. So, we also ordered the cat cakes. These are the cat cakes. Well, that drink was called uh, the Royal Shandy, and that's because we were a Shandy. And actually, I was pleasantly surprised with this uh, Paducah downtown. That's a sculpture of a buffalo right there. And now we're gonna just get to the car and get back to the campground. Pizza, and it's almost time for the sunset. Well, good morning, everybody, from Prizer Lake Campground here. A Prizer Point, KUA. As you can see, Either they failed to sell every single spot or some people haven't shown up yet. But it is a beautiful morning here in Western Kentucky and if the weather holds up, we're gonna have a beautiful solar eclipse. This is our site here. I wanna set up my cameras and all that right here. We're gonna start seeing uh, what they call um, first contact in about a few minutes. So we're gonna be able to, to see the eclipse and I'm ready with you can't see anything, but these are my eclipse glasses. Everybody, it's had, it has begun. I'm doing a time lapse here. I don't know if I, if you can see it. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah you cannot focus. There, there's a little piece of sun missing. Let me see. I'm gonna put the the, the eclipse glasses on my camera. And let's see if I can zoom in and show you guys what it's like down here. No, it doesn't really want to focus. I don't know why. Okay, it's now approximately 12, 14, and let me see if I can show you what the camera is seeing here. There you see. I'm getting a little worried about these uh, clouds that might interfere with our viewing experience. I put an electric tape on my lens because uh, my camera was going out of focus. So... There you go. That 
that's what it looks like right now. Amazing, we're almost right about halfway there. It's uh, 12.48, so in about 15 minutes. Liver of sun coming through, and that this is full, full it up, and it, it looks kind of. If you look closely to the floor, we can start to see the shadow bands, apparently caused by oh, wow. atmospheric turbulence, the same phenomenon that makes the stars twinkle. Guys, the camera doesn't do it justice. You can see, like, penumbra all around us. It's like sunset all around us. It's incredible. It's over. Wow, that was amazing. Can't wait for April 8, 2024. We'll have the next one. And I do want to return to this area also uh, sometime. Next time, perhaps with a little more planning beforehand, more prior research. Maybe we'll finally see the bison in the land between the lakes. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, then make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.